So hi everyone, my name is Alexi Mermet. I'm a graduate from PFL in data science. And today I'm gonna present a work about face detection on pre-modern Japanese artwork. So first of all, I would like to thank my collaborators, so Kitamata Sensei from Warren DS Center and NII, Suzuki-san also from Warren DS Center and NII, Takakishi-san from the University of Tokyo, all the people that work at CODH that created the Kalkuri dataset, the people from the Shoujo Kanji Temple that allowed us to use the code collection, and finally the multimedia laboratory CUHK that created this open source object detection toolbox, which is um, detection. So today's talk will be following the, this plan. So first I'm gonna to do some teasing by introducing our research problem and our goal or solution. Then I'll present both the car crew collection and our deep learning architectures. Once done, I'll dive into what is the image patching method that's really important in this paper and show you some example and some experiment on phase detection for both the labeled Kaokore collection and the unlabeled one collection. So what is our goal? It's to propose an automated phase detection tool on pre-modern Japanese artworks so that we can reduce the time needed by art historian to fully annotate a new collection. And our solution is a DL-based detector that coupled with image patching, allow us to have an efficient solution, so with good recall and good precision, and a solution that's time reducing for art historians. So first and foremost, what is a core core collection? It's a collection of facial expression that contains 8,573 high quality, manually cropped from 1,470 original drawings, faces from pre-modern Japanese picture scrolls and picture books. So from this presentation, you can say this collection is pretty small compared to photorealistic collection, and it can be problematic in DL-based like task. Then it contains only crop phase, and how can we use this crop phase for a phase detection task? It works for classification, but what about detection? And finally, this collection is pretty imbalanced according to the face's original source. Each book does not contain the same number of images, so the same number of faces. First and foremost, what we did is transform the Kaokori collection so we can, you can, we can use it in a detection setup, which means we, using the triple IF standards, we converted each of these crop phase coming from the same image, image into a bundling box in the artwork so that we can have a data set ready for detection. Then we had to think about how to split this data in some balance. And around the split, it's not good enough because of this imbalance. So we had to first create what we call the interbook split, which consists into saying a book is either available fully for training or fully for testing, so that we have a really realistic setup allowing us to evaluate the transfer of face detection methods on new collection. Then we have also the intrabook split, which allows us to span all the style presence in the collection because all books are available at 80% of their image. It, it allows us to train more generalized model. So now I'm gonna quickly present to you our phase detection architecture. So the first one is SSD. So SSD is pretty simple, fully conventional, and based on the fact that to find faces or objects at different aspect ratio, we use intermediate feature maps, outputs, and art-coded priors that are in fact region to look at for finding bonding boxes. Each of these priors are hard-coded in the conventional layer in the middle of the network. Then we have more modern like version of this, where we have, for example, faster CNN, where this time priors are replaced by RPN network that in fact is trained for the data set so that we find regions that are the more adapt for this collection. And this RPN is sharing features with the final classification layer and the final classifier in fact, so that we can train both of them at the same time. And finally, we have the cascader CNN, which is a detector based on the fact that we have this cascade of different smaller detector that allow us to have always increasing quality as we go deeper and deeper into the network. So I, I went pretty quick through this detector because I want to talk more about this image patching approach. So, our data originates from drawings, where the color palettes, the shapes, the styles, the materials, 
are variable from one book to one scroll, one scroll, another scroll. So all these artworks are pretty high resolution. And before entering any backbone or detection, they need to be reshaped, inducing detail loss, even when the aspect ratio are kept by the process. So our goal was to allow this image to be paged, passed to a detection architecture while, while avoiding as much as possible this resizing process. To solve this problem, we implemented the following image patching algorithm, which work in this way. So we'll look at an image for easier understanding. Given an image, we first pad it so that it has a size corresponding to the patch size we want, and we crop patch in it. We have two types of patch because we want to be certain to not miss any faces by using overlaps between, for example, here, a green patch and a red patch. Then during the training phase, we stop there. We only detect on the patches that contain faces and train the network. And during the testing phase this time, we go a little deeper because we put every of the bonding box found in each patch back together and do an extra non-maximum suppression step to remove all the overlapping bonding box and to find our detection results. So to finally evaluate our experiments, we used the, this following metric. So first, the pretty standard recall precision and mean average precision. And finally, the Jacquard overlap IOU that we use first to select what are the positive sample during training. So to explain it, a positive sample is a sample that contain a bonding box corresponding to a phase so that this bonding box overlap with a certain IOU threshold with its ground truth in the full image, and also for an extra NMS step. So now I'm going to talk about our experiments. So first, I'm going to talk about the setup. So we have the following threshold that are set up. So P, which is a precision score threshold, is set to 0.5. Uh, Gamma is set to 0.3. It is a jack overlap threshold that's used by the extra NMS step to remove overlapping bonding boxes. And finally, this theta threshold is a threshold used to define the positive samples I presented earlier. Also, experiments were run on the same split, intra-book split of the Cover Query collection for comparability. And all the detectors were pre-trained on ImageNet to benefits of transfer learning. Finally, we did all the training using SGD and pretty standard parameters. And keep in mind that before any training, each artwork we're going through data augmentation that are pretty standard. For example, photometric distortion, uh, color palette swap, uh, random slides, random flip, normalization according to the image the data. Set. So we need to keep this transformation in mind for our results. So the first experiment we ran was about studying the query collection using SSD detector and working on each of the splits we defined before. And from the results you can see on the right here, we can make the following assumption. First, a machine learning based face detector works good for the core query data set, which is the target of research. Then a model can generalize to books with different style, materials, color palettes, shapes, so that we can say that we can transfer a detector from one collection to another in the field of pre-modern Japanese artwork. And finally, a model, when able to train on all level available type of books, is able to do the best detection possible. So it's pretty obvious we, we have to highlight it. Then the second experiments we run was about testing the image patching method with each of the architecture. And you can see first that image patching, for example, in the setting of SSD architecture, allows a big jump in mean average precision and recall which are pretty impressive, around 30% in mean average precision. With faster CNN and Cascadier CNN, this increase is far smaller, but still present. It's about around 1%, which is pretty nice. And you can also note here that the image patching technique, in fact, benefits the detection quality as long as the patch size is adapted to the input layer of the background. For example, faster CNN is expecting 1333 times 800 input image. And so patches of such size are used so to have a good detection quality. When we use smaller patches, for example, 600 times 600, we lose the benefits of image patching. Here, we're gonna have a look at some detection results. For example, keep in mind this false positive on top. Without image patching, we found this false positive. But when we use image patching with the same detector, 
we can see we don't find it. Now have a look at this person lying on the ground. We can't find his face when we're trained a detector without match matching. But when we trade one with match matching, so sync detector, we achieve one this person in this face. So this shows that image patching brings better results. Then the final experiment we ran on car Corey was about tuning this theta threshold for IOU used to find the positive sample. So as I said, the positive samples are the samples that contain faces and that we consider containing faces, considering the overlap between the bonding box containing the patch and the bonding box containing the pollinator. And by setting this threshold to different value, we find that, that we can really improve our image patching method with fine tuning. For example, the threshold of 0.6, we can reach an increase of 0 points in minimum precision compared to not using image patching, and also an increase of 3% compared to the results we've shown before. So this means that our method can be fine tuned in the future to have far better results, and we can maybe even improve it more. So now we're going to dive into something funnier or maybe even just more interesting, which is the phase detection on an unlabeled collection, which is Kwan. So the Yu-Gi-Oh! Shonen Engi Emaki Shoto Project Kwan collection that I will abridge to Kwan because it's far too long for me, is a collection of picture scrolls from the 14th to the 17th centuries composed of multiple images. And we did detection on it using a faster CNN network trained with image patching size 1333 times with gamma and t, uh, gamma set to upon three, theta and phi set to upon five, and train on the Kaoko collection with an intra book split to have the biggest variety of books to be trained on. And we can see the following result with it. So with really quoted like artworks, we can see that our detector adapt pretty well to this new collection and find most of the faces. You can see here with a more complex background, it's still achieved to do so. Same goes here, lots of color in the background. We still find most of the character, which is pretty nice. And finally, we have here a result with a white background, which is also different, where we still are able to find, even if we have less contrast, the faces. But this result, this image, are not enough to assess the quality of our detector on the new collection. So what we did is send all of results to our historians to have a feedback on them. So first of all, what they said is, our method allowed them to be far more serious during the like labeling process of finding bonding box because they had already like region that were aligned with spaces they did less misses during this wizard method then they label each of the bonding box we sent to them in four categories the true positive the nearly true positive which are in fact bonding box that they modified a little but that were nearly correct three bonding box that were false, and finally, the faces that were missed. And considering different restriction case, we obtained the following result. So a restrictive case will be all we consider this nearly correct bonding box. In case one, we consider they are all correct. In case two, they are correct as long as they have an overlap of at least 0.5 with their run through counterpart found by like the art historians. And finally, case three is saying this overlap must be of 0.9. So here we can see the precision is always pretty high, around 85%, while the recall is always around 66%, meaning that we have a good like detector that achieved to transfer well from the new collection. Then, still discussing with this art historian, we discuss about the time we saved them. And by saying that they don't take much time to accept remove our correct uh, bonding box. We only consider that the time to add missing bonding box was really important, saying that, in fact, in the end, the time it takes them to fully annotate this collection from scratch was only one third of the time it would have taken without using our approach, meaning we saved them a lot of time. Note that with this formula, we could say, yeah, but what if we just care about the recall then? I have one recall and it's pretty easy. But that's, since we are working with humans, we can't really do that because they will be likely to use our software if only if the software shows them good enough results where they feel they see they don't have too much correction to make. Having a detector doing, having a high recall while sacrificing the precision 
will just make them do not want to use it anymore. So we need to find this like threshold between what is the most important and we think that we need to keep this eye precision and eye recall at the same time. So do not make any sacrifice between any of them. In conclusion, what we have did in this project is train an efficient face detector in the Kaoko collection that we achieved to transfer to label on an, a new collection, which is Quant. This new labeling saved around one third, uh, around two thirds of the time it was it would have taken without our approach, meaning that we can save time for art historian and this could be used on new collection in the future. Finally, we didn't really talk about the annotation process, which is about classifying each faces. And in fact, it's after discussion with art historian. It felt like this was not the most important thing for their work as of now, since they are still about studying the data set and better understanding it. In the future, what we could do then is like fully automate the process of both detection and classification, and maybe use a training loop so that for each new collection level and curated by like art historians. We used it as a training data set for the sector, so we keep improving. So thank you very much for your time. I hope uh, this presentation was good enough and you understand most of the things. And I hope to be there during the, the seminar so that we can talk more about it if you have any questions. Thank you very much and bye-bye.